Hey everybody, and welcome to Midtown Online. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our hope is that the music and the message from God's Word uh, will help you to find and experience God's best in your life. There's one thing we want to ask you to do. Sometime today, go to our website, midtownchurch.com, click that Connect tab, and fill out the online connection card. On that card, you can uh, let us know how to pray for you this week, how we can serve you. You can give us some information about yourself, and you can also request information about us. So thank you for taking the time to do that. Again, thank you for joining us for Midtown Online. We hope you enjoy worshiping with us. Good morning, Midtown. Thank you for joining us this morning. Come on, let's sing together. There's nothing our God can do. Calm the storm that surrounds me. Come on. Just one word. The darkness has to retreat. Yeah. Just one touch. I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes were open. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Just one word. You hear what's broken inside me. Just one word. I will believe, I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree, there's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree, there's no power like His power, there's nothing that there's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing, there's nothing that Jesus can do. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall he can break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. 
you have a seat. How you doing this morning? Man, it is great to see you. Welcome to Midtown Church. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Doug. I'm the lead pastor here, and we're so glad that you chose to come and worship with us this morning, especially if this happens to be your very first time with us today, or if this is your first time joining us online today. We want you to know something really, really important. Midtown Church exists to help people just like you find and experience God's best in their life. And everything we're going to do today is designed to help make that happen for all of us. And so uh, from the music that we sing, the teaching we're going to do in a few moments, everything we do, uh, we encourage you just to join in as much as you feel comfortable doing and uh, experience God's best with us today. In this worship guide that you received, there's a place right there as you open up there in the, the first couple of pages where you can write some things down, fill in some blanks, all that kind of stuff. Again, all of that's designed to help us experience God's best together today. So if this is your first time to Midtown Church, welcome. We are so glad that you joined us today. We want you just to sit back and relax and enjoy your time with us as we find and experience God's best together. I want to ask everybody if you'd open up your worship guide and find this connection card. If you're joining us online today, if you would go to midtownchurch.com and click the connect tab, the first thing that comes up is our online connection card. In fact, those of you that are here uh, in the room today, if you would like to do that as well, we would, that would be great. In fact, we would like for you to do that. You can fill this card out online. But for those of us who are here going to fill it out together, let's just walk through this, okay? Put your name there on the top, please. Put your birthday there on that next line. Please include the year on your birthday for us, okay? That really does help us as we get your information where it needs to be. So thanks for doing that. Underneath there, you can let us know how many times you've been here as a guest or if we need to update your information or any of that stuff. We ask for your mobile carrier there because that helps us communicate with you via text message through our database. So thanks for sharing that. The next part is your contact information. Please give us the email you check, the phone number where you get your messages, the address where you receive your mail. We promise to not share your contact information with anybody, so you don't have to worry about that, but we appreciate you sharing that with us today. We would love for everyone, whether you're joining us online today or you're here in the room, uh, to go on your social media accounts and let people know that you've tuned in today or let them know that you're here worshiping with us. So go ahead and check in on Facebook. Uh, go ahead and post on Twitter and on Instagram. Be sure and use the hashtag Midtown Church and the hashtag Faith Strong. That's the series that we're doing right now. We appreciate so much you doing that. It's a great way for you to invite people to come and check us out. Great way for you to have people join you online as well. So thank you so much for doing that. There's a question there on the bottom of the front that says, how did you hear about Midtown? Hey, do me a big favor. If a person told you about Midtown, put their name there. So don't put friend or family or neighbor or whatever. Put that person's name. Or if you found us online or if somebody invited you or gave you a, a hand sanitizer at the Salt Bowl last night. Any of you at the Salt Bowl last night? Yes, some of you. Did you get your little hand sanitizer that says Midtown Church on it? We could have sold those things last night and paid for like three buildings, I think. We missed an opportunity. But anyway, we were giving away free hand sanitizer last night. It was super cool. So let us know how you found us, okay? Let's look at the back of the card for just a moment for part of it. Uh, if you want some information about us, you gave us some information about you. If you'd like to know about some of our ministries, if you'd like to sign up to serve, let us know that. We'll get in touch with you. Or if you have a prayer request or God has answered prayers for you, let us know. We would love to praise God with you, and we would love to pray for you. We're going to go over the rest of the card a little bit later on, but here's what you're going to do when you leave today. You can just drop this card in one of the baskets that are back there by the doors, okay? Unless this is your first time here. Hey, first time guests, we're so, so glad that you're with us today. We want to do something for you to let you know how much we appreciate you being with us. If this is your first time here, hang on to this card. Don't drop it in one of the baskets. Instead, take it with you to the table where you picked up your worship guide. And if you'll drop it off there, we have a gift that we would like to share with all of our first-time guests today. Just a simple way to say thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being our guest. We consider it a great honor. So first-time guests, be sure to stop by and pick one of these up, okay? Everybody with me so far? Yes, you good? 
Hey, a couple of more things. There's a couple of envelopes there in your worship guide. This, these are what our members and regular attenders use to worship God by giving. Again, we would love for you to go online. Those of you that are tuning in online, go to the Give tab. You can, you can give there. Those of you that are here, we'd love for you to do that as well. But if you want to use these envelopes, you certainly can. This big one here uh, is with the big flap on it is what we use for our general offering, which helps our ministries do what we do to help more people find and experience God's best. The other one is for the land that we purchased over there at the roundabout. Everything that goes in here helps us pay down uh, the debt that we have on that land. So thank you so much for doing that. We really, really appreciate it. And again, you can give online or you can drop these in the, in the baskets as you leave this morning. All righty. Sound good? Are you glad that you're here? Yes. Hey, here's what I want you to do. I want you just to look around real quick, okay, and look at somebody and say, hey, I'm really glad you're here. Go ahead and do that, okay? So today is a very special day. Every year on Mother's Day, we take time uh, to do something really, really fun. We take time to have a special time of dedication for parents and their children. Uh, mostly newborns, but up to two years old. And we typically do that on Mother's Day, but as you know, the pandemonium caused us to miss Mother's Day here in, in the building, right? And so we had a lot of very irate moms, I mean, we had a lot of moms uh, who um, said, hey, when are we going to do this thing? And so I'm so proud of Brooke, our children's ministry leader. Give her a big hand. Here comes Brooke. Come on. Does a great job at equipping parents to uh, train up their children according to God's word so that they can find and experience God's best. And so we have a few families in the first service. We have a few families in the second service. Uh, and, and here's what this is. This is not a child dedication. This is not a child baptism, anything like that. This is a, an opportunity for parents to say, listen, we are dedicating ourselves as parents to raise our children so that they can find and experience God's best in their life. They did some online homework, right, through our website. Uh, they, that's, that's not just sign up and show off your baby, okay? They had homework that they had to do, and they've done all of that. And so we're going to give them today a certificate, letting them know that they've done that. Also, as they leave the stage, they're going to receive a Bible for their children, and it's a lot of fun for them to be able to get into God's Word and share that as well. And so, uh, without any more of my talking, Brooke, it's your turn to talk. Introduce our, our families today. Okay, we have Keith and Sarah Foy and their son, Luke. How are you guys? Uh, yeah, a little nervous. That's, that's okay, right? Now, Luke is how old? Brooke, where's your microphone? Almost two months. Ten months. I was going to say that's a big kid. <laughs> Almost ten months. He's a sweetie pie. Yeah. So you guys have another child, right, who is how old? Ten years old. So ten years and ten months. Very good. So what's it like with the new baby in the house? Exhausting. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, we can totally relate to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much. Very proud of you, and thank you for being a part of this today, okay? Step right over there. We have Robbie and Carissa McDonald with Remy, Kate, and Knox. Hey, guys. Hi, Remy. Hi, Remy, Kate. I heard you back there a while ago when I was talking. You were just excited, weren't you? She's saying amen. That's right. Raising her right. Train, train her up good. All right. So, so, Robbie, tell us how old your kiddos are. So, Knox is two and a half. We're going to be three soon. And Remy Kate is one and a half going on 16. Yes, absolutely. Lot, uh oh, I missed it. I tried. Lots of personality and lots of excitement going on. So, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the joys and the excitement of uh, having two little kiddos in the house. Carissa, go ahead. You're tired. <laughs> no, it's fun. It's always good to, you know, when you pick them up from daycare or whatever, and the joy and the excitement, but it has its frustrations. Oh, yeah. You know, yesterday when Knox woke us up about 6.30, doing a little popper that one of his grandparents, you know, the roll popper. Grandparents. Yeah, they, yeah. Come on, grandparents. Point. I have a brother that does that. Yeah. He thinks he's the fun uncle. He's not at all. But so it's, uh, it's, No, it's great. We're yeah. Blessed. Awesome. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being here. Hey, you guys come back over here. Stay right there for a second. All right, I'm going to step over here. I want to take a moment to pray with you guys and, and pray for you guys because as you heard me say and as you know, this is not a just show off your kiddo and ded dedicate your kiddo. Uh, this has nothing to do really with their eternity except that you're committing 
to do what you can to assure that they have eternity in heaven by accepting Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior someday. And so we want to partner with you to do everything we can to help you as a church. I know Brooke and our children's ministry does an amazing job of that. And today I want you to join me in just a prayer of dedication. God, here's our kiddos. And as hard as this is, moms, here's our kids, God, and we want you to take them and help us, help us to be the kind of parents we want to be so that they can find experience your best. So let's pray together and ask God to do that for us. You ready? Father, thank you so much for these families, and thank you so much for their willingness to make this kind of commitment. Thank you, God, that they are willing to put in the homework and the effort that is required to be a part of this, this ceremony today. But more than that, I pray that as they walk off the stage in a moment, having made this commitment in front of their friends and their family and their church that wants to love and support them, and having made this commitment to you, that, God, they will put forth the effort that they need to make it a normal part of their routine, to put you first in their family so that these children truly can find and experience your best for them. And we ask you to do that today in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys so much. If you go right over there, Burke's going to give you your Bible. Give them a huge hand, would you? So proud of these guys. Let's stand up and continue to worship God through music, guys. Strangest neighbors, our blood is one. The children of generations, of every nation, of kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no even fix your eyes on this one truth that God is madly in love with you so take courage hold on be strong remember where our help comes from oh, 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 oh. Oh.
And our salvation is in his blood. And Jesus, light of heaven, and friend forever, his kingdom come. Come on, let's praise him in this place. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you that our hearts do not have to be troubled. God, we just hold on to your truth. We live in your faith. Father, open our hearts right now to hear your word proclaimed of how we can increase that faith. Father God, we need your help. You are where our help comes from. And we thank you for that in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Well, good morning again, guys. So glad that you're here. I want to encourage you to get your worship guide out. Click your pin open. Those of you who are joining us online, I hope that you've gone to our website and printed out that worship guide where you can fill in the blanks today as we are wrapping up our series called Faith Strong. If this is your first time here and you're going, oh great, I caught, caught the tail end of this series, it's totally okay. And I'm going to tell you why here in just a moment. But let me tell you what we've been doing. Since we came back into the building on August the 2nd, we started off with this series because we understood something really important. During the pandemonium of the pandemic, okay, we have discovered that what we thought we could count on, what we thought we could stand on, the things we thought we could rely on turned out to not be quite as reliable as some of us thought. In fact, some of the things that we thought that we could hang on to, what we called our faith, and by the way, your faith is what you hang on to for your life when things go wrong in your life. A lot of us found that our faith may not have been as strong as we thought it was. A lot of us found out our, our faith may have been a bit flimsy. And so we've been learning how to be faith strong. Why? So that we can stand when the difficulties come. So that not only when there's a, a pandemic going on, but then when there's a, a hurricane that shows up, right? Uh, and then when there's back to school time, and then we're trying to raise children or whatever is going on, there's always going to be something. And so we need to have a strong faith personally. But watch this. As Christians and as a church, we also understand that we need to be faith strong out there, outside of these walls, because people aren't coming in here like they used to, for whatever reason. And for those of you who are joining us online today, that is not an indictment against you in any way, shape, or form. We're glad that you're joining us online. There are people who are just not ready to do that right now, and that's okay. It's totally not a problem. But all the more reason why we need to make sure, those of us that are here, those of you who are joining us online, that we are faith strong out there. Because we used to count on people showing up here once a week, right? And then that got taken away from us. So we've been learning how to be faith strong. We take, we, we've taken the letters of the word faith. Each of those stands for an action or an attitude that we need to adopt in our lives in order to strengthen our faith. We said the F stands for our foundation. Our foundation must be on Jesus. Right on? Anybody? All right, very good. Uh, well, he said the letter A stands for action. The Bible teaches us that faith without action is dead and useless, so you have to put it into action. F-A-I stands for intentional. Uh, growth doesn't happen by accident. It happens when you have a godly intent. You must be intentional and do what you're supposed to do. F-A-I. T last week was time. I'm sorry. I'm just a little slow this morning. I didn't have enough coffee either. Where am I? T. T is for timely. Okay, last week we said, hey, your faith must be timely, meaning that it must be appropriate and effective according to the need of the moment. All of those things work together to help us be strong in our faith so that we can endure whatever life throws at us and so that we can be an example to those who are out there. Today we finish up with the letter H, and the H stands for help, because here's what I know. You and I cannot be faith strong by ourselves. We cannot grow our faith on our own. We cannot develop a strong faith in our own strength. We need help, every one of us. And once you realize that, that God must be your help, then you are ready to move toward a strong faith and experience God's best. We all need help. Turn to somebody by you and look at them and say, you need, no, say, I need help, okay? Say, I, don't say you need, say, I, I need help. We all need God's help if we're going to be faith strong. 
We need, what do we need help with? Well, let's think about it. You need help with your finances, some of us, right? We need help physically. We need help with our friendships. We need help with our families. In fact, I ask the families that are involved in our parent-child dedication, both in this service and in our next service, I sent them some questions. I said, hey, tell me how you need God's help, what you do to get in on God's help, and how God has helped you in raising your children. And I want to tell you something. If I could today, I would just read all the emails I got. It is amazing. We could take our entire time today and just read those emails, and it would be amazing. We could go home, and some of you are like, okay, Doug, let's do that. No. Because you know if we didn't fill in those blanks, you guys would be calling me up and wearing me out. So, but I do want to share some with you, okay? In fact, so see if you can relate to this. Listen to this. This is from a dad of a, new bra- of a new baby boy. He said this. My wife and I both went from the high of becoming parents, having those first six weeks to grow together and get accustomed to our son being there, then <laughs> back to work, the stresses of our job, And then the virus hit. We were fortunate to both have our jobs, but we have struggled to put our marriage first. And I began to experience anxiety like I never have before. We are at a place now that we know God is the only way to get out of this rut. God must be our help. We are setting aside time for us to do a Bible study together. And we know that we have to be stronger for our son to become the man we pray he will be. We need God's help, don't we, guys? No matter what your situation, we have to understand that today. So here's what I want us to do. God wants to help us. Do you believe that? God wants to help you. But I think there are things that you and I have to do in order to get the most out of the help that God wants to offer us. Does that make sense? There are some requirements to getting in on God's help. God is ready. God is able. God says, I want to pour all of this into your life, but what do we have to do to get in on that? Let me show you three things today, okay? Three things, and this won't take long, and this is not going to hurt too bad, okay? But I I want you to understand that there are things that are required of us, and as we go through here, I'm going to be sharing some other examples and some things that these parents sent me today. So what are the requirements? What do we need to do in order to get in on all the help that God has for us? You ready? Let's write these three things down. Number one is this, admission. Help requires admission, not paying the price, although that would be good, right? But admit you need help. Fill in those blanks there. Before we get in on all the help that God wants for us, we have to admit, God, I need your help. And, and before you start thinking, look, look at me and listen. You ready? You finished writing? I'll give you a second. You ready? Those of you that are watching online, listen to this. Before you start thinking, well, only wimps ask for help. Only weak people need help. Only people that are, you know, lame and you know, those, those kind of folks need it. Uh-uh. Watch this. One of the strongest things you will ever do is ask God for help. Never be afraid to ask for help. One of the strongest things you will ever do is admit that you need God's help. Listen to this from a new mom. She said, I'm always willing to take help from God right? She said, but I'm not always the best at asking for it. A lot of it has to do with being ashamed. Why would God listen to a sinner like me? So often I find myself just not talking to God because I'm not ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of the fact that I haven't been to church regularly. I have sins that I've committed or the fact that I don't pray as often as I should. And I know this is not the right way to look at things because he is always near and ready to listen. This is definitely something that I'm working on. We need to start today by asking God, admitting to God, God, I need help. In fact, if this is your first time to Midtown Church and you were concerned about being on the tail end of this series, now this is really good. This is a great place to start. Because before you can become faith strong, you have to admit, God, I need help. I must get help from you. Listen to how the psalmist wrote it in Psalm 70. Verse 5. It's printed for you there in your notes. It's on the screen for you as well. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Please hurry to my aid, O God. You are my helper and my savior. O Lord, do not delay. Admitting 
you need the help. Let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer. In fact, I'd prefer that you not answer. I just want you to think about this. You ready? What do you need to admit today? What do you need to admit to God? Hey, God, I'm tired. <laughs> hey, God, I'm, I'm feeling very weak. Hey, God, I'm frustrated today. Watch this. Hey, God, I'm scared. God, I don't know what to do. God, I need some motivation. Change my heart. Uh, give me some got clear vision. Hey, God, there are all these distractions. Well, I need to remove these distractions. What is it you need to admit today? Because here's what I know. You will position yourself to receive help from God when you admit that you need help from God. Does that make sense? You position yourself to receive help from God when you admit that you need help from God. One of the strongest, bestest things you can do is say, God, I need you. I need your help. And I'm coming to you admitting that today. First step to getting in on the help that God has for you is admission. Admit you need help. Here's the second thing. You ready? Number two. Getting help requires submission, which means you submit yourself to God. Write that in the blanks. It requires submission, which means you submit yourself to God. What does the word submit mean? Let's do a little English grammar uh, lesson for you. Ready? It's back to school time. This will be fun, won't it? The prefix sub, S-U-B, means what? Under, right? So subterrain means under the terrain or under ground. Submarine means underneath the water, okay? A submersible. So submit must mean what? Under the mitt, correct? Kind of. Let me explain it to you. When, 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 uh, when our kids were really young, when they were, were they really small, like some of the kiddos you saw up here today, but they're toddling around, when they were about this old, and we were in a crowd, or we were going to the store, or we were uh, at some place where there was a lot of people going on, oftentimes I would take my hand and put it on their head. I would. You know why? I had complete control. I could steer them this way. I could steer them that. I go, whoa, I go, go, right? And we just, wherever we went, I could steer them completely. Submitting to God means this. You allow God to take his great, big, strong, mighty, tender, loving, heavenly Father hand and place it on your life and say, you ready? Let me lead you to my best. Whoa, 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 easy. All right, good. No, we probably ought to go over here. That's good. Yeah, go, good, good. That's what it means to submit. And, and we will not experience the help that God wants to pour into our lives. We will not experience all that God has for us unless we're willing to say, God, I surrender. I give up. I submit myself completely to you. I'm giving up on the things that I thought I could do in my own strength. Sound familiar? Anybody? God, I, I'm not even going to rely on, uh, you know, my knowledge or my skills or my stuff. Watch this. Submitting sometimes means you even give up on your family and your friends. Now, hang on. Let me explain what that means, okay? Because <laughs> some of you are like, yes, I've been trying to get rid of my... No, that's not, that's not what it is. That's not that... Uh, listen, here's what that means. And a lot of us figured this out when this pandemic hit. We thought we could count on our friends and family, didn't we? But we realize, man, they're going through the same stuff we're going through. I'm not saying write your family off. I'm not saying write your friends off. We need help and support from our friends and family. But listen, if that's where we're going first, we were always going to find failure. Can God use them? Yes. But submit to God's control and let him lead you where he needs you to go. The Bible says like this in Hebrews 4.16. You see it there in your notes. We'll put it on the screen for you as well. Here we go. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. What does that mean? You know, when you approach the throne of a king, when you approach the throne of someone in authority, you don't come bust up in there, yo, hey, what's up? I'm here. Uh-uh. You come humbly. You come in submission. You come and you bow before. Okay? But it says, we come boldly to him because there we will receive his mercy and we will find the grace to what? Help. Help us when we need it most. 
Submitting to God means, God, I'm coming boldly to you because I know you can help, but I come submitting myself to you knowing that I need your mercy and I need your grace. I want you to listen to this from a mom of a, uh, a very critically ill baby, one that we prayed for for a long, long time, who uh, had several issues, a major, major heart issue, and in fact had to go to Boston uh, to get spe- uh, special treatment. And I want you to listen to what she had to say. What I needed to do in order for God to help me was probably the hardest thing I have ever done. Faith isn't easy, and I don't think it's meant to be easy. I'm a bit of a control freak. Anyone? (laughs) I'm a bit of a control freak. I like to be in control of situations, and this is one thing that I was never in control of. It was at one specific point where we were in Boston that things looked like they weren't going to improve. The doctors had done everything they could. It just wasn't enough to give our son the quality of life he needed to survive. So we were given a time frame. Five days. Five days, and then I would be faced with the hardest decision of my life. This is the moment where I knew I needed God more than I ever had before. I went to bed praying, begging God to save my son to give me the direction on what I should do, how I can save my son. Now she writes, now if you'll go back and read those sentences, there's a whole lot of I's and me's and not very many you's. I realized I was praying the wrong prayer. I woke up the next morning with a song, It Is Well, playing over and over in my head, specifically the part that says, through it all, my eyes are on you, through it all, it is well. That's the moment I gave it all to God. Whatever the outcome was going to be, I knew it was God's plan. And I knew that God was going to heal my son one way or the other. There was nothing I could do, and there's nothing more the doctors could do. I had faith that God was going to heal my son, and I had nothing left to give. I was mentally, emotionally, and physically exhausted. So I waved the white flag, and I surrendered to God. It was as if God was waiting on me to be drained so that I could finally turn to him. The hard part was literally giving it all to him, letting go of any control I thought I had, letting go of all the trust I had put in the doctors. The unknown is scary, but that's where faith comes in. Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 through 33 will forever be sketched in my brain. That's the story of Peter saying, Jesus, can I come out and walk on the water too? And and Peter starts walking on the water. Then he sees the waves and sinks. And Jesus reaches out and says, Peter, why do you have so little faith? Why did you doubt me? She said, that story is playing over and over and over in my head. Will forever be sketched in my brain because those verses carried me through. And they still do today. Submission is critical to the mission that God has for your life. We must be willing to say, God, I can't, but you can And I'm giving up, I'm waving the white flag, I'm surrendering, and I'm giving it to you. Submission means you give up your plans and desires and step up to God's plans and desires for your life. Give up your plans and desires. Step up to God's plans and desires and let him pour his help into your life and lead you to his best. Which leads us to the last thing. Getting help from God requires admission, it requires submission, and lastly, it requires commission. Write the word commission there in the blank. Commission means you commit the necessary actions. You commit the necessary action. Commission means this, like if, if, you, were, um, if you were charged with a crime, you were charged with the commission of of a crime. You were charged with doing the things required to break the law. You, were do, you did what was necessary. You did these actions, and so now you've been charged. Commission is action. And in order for us to receive the help that God has for us, we must commit certain actions. Hear this. Commitment is action. Got it? Commission is action. When you commit to something, now listen to this. You ready? When you commit to something, you prove your commitment by committing an action that shows your commitment. Does that make sense? When you say you commit to something, you prove your commitment by committing some action that shows your commitment. Remember what James said, James chapter 2 in the Bible, we talked about this in letter A, faith without works, without actions is what? dead. 
useless. Doesn't do us any good. So if we say we're committed, then we have to take action. And the Bible says that when we commit our actions to God, He stands ready to help us. Look at Psalm verse 37, excuse me, chapter 37, verse 5. You see it there in your notes? It's on the screen. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. Circle the word do. Commit what you do to the Lord. God, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I'm taking action. My commitment is being proved by my action. Proverbs 16, 3. Look at it. Commit your actions to the Lord. Circle the word actions. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. When what we do is committed to Him, when our commitment and our actions work together, God says, I will help you. I will lead you to success, but you must take action. And not just random whatever acts and being busy. You know, one of the great enemies to effectiveness is busyness. One of the great enemies to experiencing God's best in our lives is busyness. Even good things that keep us distracted from the best things. So I'm not talking about, oh, well, well, preacher man said I need to be uh, more active, and so I'm going to sign up for this ministry and this ministry and this ministry. I'm going to volunteer here, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be in this study and that study and that. And I'm just, no, if God tells you to do that, okay. But don't get so busy doing good stuff that you mess out on the best stuff. Anybody? You with me here? When, when I say take action, here's what happens. I admit I need help. I submit to God and say, God, show me your help. And as I pray, and as I read his word, as I sit under God's teaching, as I get godly counsel, God makes it obvious, obvious, what it is we're supposed to do. And God says, I will lead you to the best that I have for you. Listen to this from a dad of a premature boy. But a little boy was born incredibly premature, had all kind of problems, spent 148 days in the NICU at the hospital. He said, throughout everything, we've always made a point to do two things when we were in need. We will always be in need of God's help, but this was especially true this past year, these, especially these 148 days. Two things that we did, action, you ready? Number one, he said, when we needed help, we prayed earnestly and often. We made an effort to pray as individuals and as a family. We would set aside a few minutes at the end of each day to gather together as a family before bed and lift up all our concerns to God, no matter how big, no matter how small. We never knew how or in what form God would help us, but we knew He would help us. The key for us was putting 1,000% trust in God. We had no choice but to trust Him and know He would handle it. The action they took was pray. Here's the second action, though. He said, when we needed help, we continued to worship God in as many forms and ways as we could. We made a point to continue to give to God through our church and worship through giving. We made a point to lift up our praises to Him whenever possible, especially in the dark times. God's Word says in Acts chapter 16 that Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises even when they were in prison. Using this example... This is what we strive to do. We would worship by giving thanks for all the positive things he was doing in our lives, knowing that he would handle the negative things. That was our main focus during worship, to thank him for every good thing he does, knowing he can turn anything that the enemy was doing into victory. Action. Action. If you want to get in on the best that God has for you, you want to receive the help that God has for you, we must take focused action to position ourselves to receive from him. Listen to this story from a dad who uh, has two young children. And I love this because at some point, you have to quit talking about it, you have to quit thinking about it, you have to quit reading about it, watch this, and you even have to quit sometimes praying about it. Did the preacher say don't pray? No, hear me. There are some things you don't need to pray about. You know what God wants you to do. You know what steps you ought to be taking. I think that's what this guy is saying. He said this, God is helping me become a better parent by reminding me that God's love for me is stronger than the love I have for my children. Thinking of it in those terms humbles me because my love for my children is so fierce. But to think that God loves me more than that, that drives me to work at being 
the godly man he wants me to be. That drives me to do the things in the Bible that he tells me in the Bible that he wants me to be. To be the godly man that he desires so that my children will see him through me. Understanding God's love has shown me what loving unconditionally really is. To commit is to act. Your commitment is proven when you commit some action that shows that you are truly committed to God. In fact, I believe this. I'm not sure you're committed spiritually if you're not committing physically. I'm not sure we're really committed spiritually if we're not committing physically. In fact, when you read through the New Testament, anytime Jesus performs some kind of miracle of healing or whatever it was with people, there was always, always a physical act tied to it. Oh, you want me to uh, heal your blindness? Awesome. Go wash in that pool over there and you'll be healed. Oh, you want me to cure you of leprosy? Awesome. Go show yourself to the priest. Oh, you want me to, uh, to heal your, your daughter or whatever it may be? Come on, let's go and, and, and we will lay hands and pray for whatever. There was always a physical action. Get up, walk, go show yourself to the priest, roll up your bed, whatever it was. Always something physical tied to it. Why? Because physical actions prove, prove your commitment. And if you want to get in on God's best and you want him to help you with whatever you're struggling with today, whatever's going on in your life, it's as simple as admission, admitting you need help. That's the first step. It's as simple as submission. God, I, I submit myself to you and give you control. I give up. I surrender. It's as simple as commission, committing to do what he wants you to do. And when we do that, God always promises that he will pour his help into our lives and allow us to withstand whatever problem, whatever crisis, whatever craziness and chaos is going on and move toward his best. So let's wrap it up today, you guys, by asking the big question we ask every week. And what's our big question? Come on. Hey, if you're new today, we like to ask, well, well, so what? If that's what the Bible says and that's what that means, well, what what do I do with that? And that's not a mean, ugly, disrespectful question. It's actually a a really, really good question. And I think it's important that we ask, well, well, if that's what God's Word says, well, what what do I do with that? So we always give you a so what memory verse every week. And our memory verse this week is Psalm 46, verse 1. And here's what it says. Look at it with me. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Our refuge, a place where you can go and and find shelter and find safety and be secure. Our strength, because we are weak and we can't do it ourselves. Always, I love this, always ready to help in times of trouble. God wants to help you. He's just waiting on us. I really think God's just waiting on us to admit, submit, and commit to him. Now, listen, let me, let me say this before, we, before I wrap it up today. If you've never truly admitted your need for Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's where we have to start. If you've never really accepted him into your heart, admitting, hey, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners, and our sin keeps us from God. And then realizing that Jesus, he died on the cross to pay for our sins so we wouldn't have to. And not just believing that in your head, but receiving him in your heart and committing your life to him as your boss, as the one you're going to follow. That's where we start today. Make sure that you, and it's just that simple. In your heart, you say, Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sin and rose again, and I commit myself to you right now. But if you have done that, you need to know, God stands ready and able to help you. And all we have to do is admit, submit, and commit. And then he will lead us to his best. So here's what I want you to write down. But listen, I know how you guys are. Those of you that are watching online, we're going to fill in the blanks, but hold with me. i got two more things to share with you, two great stories, okay? Ready? But here, you can write this down. Asking for help is never wrong because when I am weak, God is strong. Asking for help is never wrong. We start off with that, right? The strongest thing you can do is admit you need help. God, I, I'm weak, and I'm, I'm scared, and I'm tired, and I'm frustrated, and I'm just dis- concerned, and I'm distracted. That's great. That's strong. Because when we are weak, the Bible teaches that God is strong. He's always ready to help. Let me give you two more stories. You ready? Let's go back to the dad of the uh, premature little boy. Listen to this story. 
He said, not too long after uh, our son was born, we were constantly trying to balance work and being at the hospital and life and all those things. During one instance, I went to the parking deck to get in my truck so I could run an errand, and I had a flat tire. The timing of this could not have been any worse. It was one more thing we had to worry about, one more strike from the enemy, and a long series of losses that week. Having no other vehicle, I quickly Googled the closest tire shop, put the spare on, and drove to that tire shop. When I arrived, I told them that I needed to get back to the hospital as quickly as possible and told them a little bit about what was going on with my son. The man at the counter said, I'll see what I can do to get you in and out as quickly as possible. After a quick 25 minutes, man came back and handed me my keys and said, you're good to go. He said, great. I walked up to the counter, got my wallet out to pay, and he said, no need, sir. You're good to go. Have a great day. God was helping. God was working. We didn't know when or how the help would come, but he was there every single day day. This was a massive boost to our faith. It still brings tears to my eyes to this day to think about that moment, how God let me know he was going to be walking with us side by side, helping, guiding, no matter how big, no matter how small. Listen, we know that we need to go to God. We know that when we go to God, God says he will help. But I want you to hear one more story because this is really important. Sometimes when we go to God in a situation like that, God shows up miraculously and, and, and pays for your tire, and that's super-duper cool. But sometimes God uses other ways to get us the help that we need. I want you to listen to this story from a mom of a brand-new baby boy. She said, the biggest way that God has helped me is in my struggle with anxiety. I've struggled with anxieties for years, and I'm very open about it. But I never wanted to get any help for it because, and she put in quotes, I was fine. Can you relate to that? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, it'll be okay. Oh, it'll go away. As she struggled with her anxiety. After our son was born, I prayed a lot about my anxiety. I knew God was calling me, listen to this, I knew God was telling me, calling me to stop trying to do it on my own. So I made an appointment with the doctor so that I could get some medication to help with my anxiety. And it's the best decision I've ever made. The medication not only calms my fears, but listen to this, this is fascinating. It not only calms my fears, but it allows me to focus on God in a clear way so that I can give my fears and anxieties to Him and quit trying to control it myself. Before the medication, I couldn't get my mind to stop spiraling long enough to go back to the scripture I had memorized or to pray the way I needed to pray. I had to think of every possible outcome and how I, she said emphasis on I, could control the situation. God wants to help you. And you are not weak for getting help. It's the wisest, smartest, bestest thing you will ever do. Because when we are weak, God is strong. What do you need to admit today? How can you submit to him today? What actions has he already told you you need to commit today so that you can experience his best? I want to challenge you. On the bottom of your connection card, there's a thing called my personal so what. And it says, this week I will get help by. What is the one specific thing you're going to do? What are you going to admit? How are you going to submit what action do you need to commit? And if you're online, you can fill that out online as well. In fact, I'd love for all of you that are here today even to go online and fill that out. Let us know because we'd like to pray for you. We don't share that with our whole staff. We don't email that out. Just our pastors see that. But today, get some help. Admit, submit, commit. And see how God shows up in your life in a powerful way to lead you to his best. Let's pray. Let's ask God to help us do that. You ready? Father, thank you so much that you are right there waiting, willing to help us no matter what we're dealing with. And God, there are parents in this room that need help with their children. There are husbands and wives who need help with their marriage. There are families who need help with a relationship problem, a financial problem, a physical problem. God, there are single adults and there are students who have some issues that they're struggling with and they need your help. God, there are people in this room who are struggling with anxiety, with fear, with depression. God, we need, we need help. We can't do this. 
And I'm so grateful that you very clearly show us that when we ask for your help, you are there. When we put our foundation on Jesus, when we take action on what you've already shown us, when we are intentional and timely, God, you help us develop a strong faith that leads us to your best. And God, we're grateful for that. We give you all the credit for it. We give you all the glory for it. And God, I pray that this week we would experience your help like never before and that we would be an example to all those around us of what it looks like to be faith strong in you. We pray all this today in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen.